Russia has a shortage of microchips in its war against Ukraine, but the country has found a solution for this. Russian companies are using old Dutch ASML machines in the production of weapons to be used against Ukraine. According to Euromaidan media outlet, this revelation underscores challenges of enforcing sanctions in the complex supply chain. While ASML has ceased direct shipments to Russia, the country has found alternative means to keep its chips production operational. This workaround allows Russia to maintain a degree of technological self-sufficiency in its military operations, prolonging the war against Ukraine and makes Ukrainian citizens extra vulnerable to new attacks. In addition, it raises questions about the effectiveness of current export controls. As reported by Dutch newspaper Trau, intermediaries in China provide spare parts, allowing Russia to keep the machines running. As a result, Russia can produce some of its own chips for tanks, missiles and drones. These are weapons used daily to attack Ukrainian civilians and military personnel. As of 2023, Dutch company ASML, it is the largest supplier for the semiconductor industry and the sole supplier in the world of extreme ultraviolet lithography, photolithography machines that are required to manufacture the most advanced chips. The company has long since stopped sending spare parts. The company confirms that it complies with the imposed sanctions on Russia. They claim to have not shipped anything to Russia for years. One advantage for Ukraine is that the machines do not produce the most advanced chips. However, according to American University lecturer Chris Miller, author of Chip War, the fight for the world's most critical technology, this may not be a problem for Russia. According to the university lecturer, Russia can still easily make simple chips for tanks, airplanes, drones and missiles. Simple chips are often used in the military, but actually in all devices. A car contains thousands of chips, but only a few of them are the latest technology, Miller noted. In essence, Russia doesn't need the latest state-of-the-art chips to continue weapons production. The question is how Russia manages to keep its ASML equipment running for so long. Without new spare parts, a machine can break down after only a year, experts say. A number of small Russian importers could explain the circumvention. Customs records accessed by Trau show that, since the start of the Russo-Ukrainian war, they have gotten spare parts for ASML machines into the country at least 170 more times, and that lasted at least until December 2023. These are middlemen who scour the market for usable parts, such as the highly specialized ASML equipment. They then resell the imported goods to manufacturers in Russia. Some of these traders, such as AK Microtech and Ostec EC, are already on Western sanctions lists because they have proved important to the arms and chip industry. Other importers from the customs data accessed by Trau are not yet on sanctions lists. These include Kraftec from St. Petersburg and VLK Logistica from Moscow. In addition, the Dutch outlet notes that other ways Russia manages to acquire these chips is through middlemen in China and Serbia. Increasingly, there is more evidence on Western chips featured in Russian weapons which are being used against Ukraine. Billionaire Elon Musk says he didn't allow the activation of Starlink satellite internet terminals over occupied Crimea at Ukraine's request in 2022 as this would have violated US sanctions against Russia. He wrote about this on his X account. According to the businessman, in 2022, his company received a request from the Ukrainian government in the middle of the night to activate Starlink in Crimea within a few hours. At the same time, they didn't receive any permission from the US government to circumvent sanctions. Musk said that by complying with Ukraine's request, his company would be committing a criminal violation of American law. He also recalled that Starlink is a commercial system, not a military system. Use of Starlink for communications, including military communications, is fine, just like the military uses the internet in general, but if we deliberately engage in explicit acts of war, then we are making Starlink a military system and other countries have every right to shoot down our satellites," Musk wrote. Starlink disconnection scandal in Crimea Writer Walter Isaacson wrote about the Starlink shutdown in his biography of Elon Musk in 2023. According to him, the businessman was afraid that the Ukrainian armed forces would use the technology to strike at the Russian Black Sea Fleet. 
Musk, in turn, said that he did not disconnect Starlink in Crimea. He rejected Ukraine's request to connect it. There was an emergency request from government authorities to activate Starlink all the way to Sevastopol. The obvious intent being to sink most of the Russian fleet at anchor. If I had agreed to their request, then SpaceX would be explicitly complicit in a major act of war and conflict escalation, he wrote. Mikhailo Podolyak, an advisor to the head of Ukraine's president's office, called Musk's actions a mixture of ignorance and a big ego, which resulted in numerous human casualties. The US Senate demanded an investigation into SpaceX after it admitted that it had blocked Ukraine's Starlink satellite internet service in Crimea. Musk himself said he did not consider himself a traitor over the incident. It is worth noting that this is not the first scandal involving Musk. Last year, his company SpaceX informed the Pentagon that it refused to finance Starlink satellite communication services in Ukraine. Eventually, the US took over the costs.